Una vez más, para los que van entrando, este, si requiere um, uh, escuchar esto en español, hay un icono en la parte de abajo de su pantalla, mano, dere mano derecha, uh, que dice interpretación. Si hace clic en el encío, uh, puede seleccionar Spanish para escuchar uh, la sesión de hoy en español. We'll give another minute or so for those who are logging on to, uh, with us. And if you're watching us by YouTube, we will start in just a second. Wow, wey, una vez más, para los que requieren español, uh, si hacen clic en el encío, uh, en la parte de abajo de su pantalla que dice interpretación, uh, puede seleccionar Spanish para escuchar la sesión de hoy en español. Thank you, uh, Adrian. Hello, everybody. My name is Maurice Sweeney. I'm the Chief Equity Officer here in Chicago Public Schools. And welcome to our Capital Improvement Planning Sessions. We're glad to spend some time with you this evening um, partly just to inform folks about what is this process and, you know, how do we allocate the money to really serve the needs of our schools and our communities. I'm really thankful and grateful I'm here with a bunch of great people um, who believe in the, in the work of equity and racial equity. And so we're excited to just share with you the work that has been happening for two years and then give you an opportunity to ask us questions. Some of you have already submitted questions and we hope that we begin to sort of build everybody's knowledge around the capital investment process here in Chicago Public Schools. Next slide. So a few uh, objectives. Number one, we just want to sort of recap last year, the FY21 uh, capital planning process. Um, we want to continue to build everybody's understanding, like I said before, and also to consult with you partly in the survey, partly in the questions, um, just to collect more feedback on how do we continue to make this process transparent and informative for each of you as we begin to solve some of our capital needs. Um, we have two questions to think about. The first one is what is the most important uh, area of priority for you? Um, in a moment, you'll hear Director Dye, Vinny Dye, just share with you the different categories that we have in Chicago Public Schools of the ways we think about um, you know, investing resources, prioritizing uh, specific communities and needs, but you may be having something that you're holding for your school or community. Um, and we're gonna ask you to put that in the survey because we need those insights as a way of constantly uh, engaging with our folks to hear, you know, what's important to everyone. And then we want to really think about how do we inform communities of the capital planning process? And I might've said this like five or six times, but. We want to make sure that when people ask us about what happens, how do we select projects, how much money do we have, where does the money go, we want to make sure that we are clear and consistent. So we hope that this helps uh, to get clearer uh, with each of you this evening. So here's the all star cast um, deputy chief Segura I, I appreciate you for always opening up always showing up in spaces across the city to engage families and community. My name is Maurice Sweeney, um, Director of Capital Operations. Vinny Dye is going to share with you some of the things I talked about. Executive Director of Capital Planning and Construction. Ivan Hansen is going to get into like, what's the money? Where does it come from? How do we think about um, spending it? What is the difference between capital planning and facilities? And my, one of my favorite people in the world in our CPS universe, uh, equity data strategist Ada Gomero, who will explain the ways in which we do what's called indexing and equity indexing to ensure that some of our communities who are hardest hit or who have been historically underserved are getting their fair share. So with that, we also wanna thank all of our partners who helped us create the presentation. So what we've decided last year and we continue this year was to 
design a presentation, bring it in front of the groups of people you see on the screen to say, is this the right stuff? Is this the right information? Is it clear? So we hope that what we put together um, starts to speak to um, some of the questions that you have. And if they're not, please drop them in the chat. Um, and you can also ask them in the survey as well. In our CPS five-year vision that we launched uh, in March, April, 2019, two years ago, actually, um, we made a, 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 a stronger commitment to integrity that says, we respect our people, our diverse communities, and we will continue to openly communicate in order to build trust. And that is the reason we started these capital planning sessions uh, beginning last year. We define equity as really providing youth with the opportunities and resources that they need. Next slide, please. With the opportunities and resources that they need so that they can thrive. We want to make sure that everything, not only the curriculum is culturally responsive, but also that schools are clean, bright, and beautiful. And we want to continue to figure that out with our capital planning. So here's my favorite uh, image is the CPS equity lens. And in our CPS equity framework that you can find at equity.cps.edu, we lay out what the equity lens is. Um, we say that we have a certain goal that we want to get all of our young people to, not only graduation and reading, but for them to be in, in schools that are welcoming and physically attractive. And so we're figuring out how do we continuously do that. Um, we talk about liberatory thinking, which is the way of addressing our mindsets, like what are the car conversations we need to have with ourselves. Inclusive partnerships is about bringing different stakeholder groups to the table, those with institutional memory, those most impacted by inequity, and those responsible for implementation. Your voices and those voices are critical to making sure that we solve and respond and mitigate the things that we need to address in order to advance equity. Resource equity is about resource allocation. That's the complete and total reason why we do the opportunity and equity indexing that Ada is gonna talk about. And then last, how do we make sure that the processes, the policies and the systems benefit all? So that's the nutshell of all of that. In inclusive partnerships today, we will do some speaking to inform you. We will consult, um, we will also listen. So please drop your questions. Uh, we wanted to make sure we broadcasted this on YouTube to give other people an opportunity to weigh in and to see it and then to complete the survey so that everybody's informed. And just a little bit about the money, right? So just a reminder, um, you probably have seen if you've been in any of the sessions around budget, where does the money come from? About half of it comes through local tax dollars, um, local funds, 18%, um, about 20% comes from the federal government. And then you can see 30% comes from the state. What do we do with that money? We pay our pension debt because we honor those who have served in our system, um, who have given their lives to public service and education. And it's our responsibility to make sure people have their pensions. Uh, the majority of the money goes directly to supporting schools. And that little orange sliver pays people like me and those of us on this call to make sure that we're supporting schools in the best way possible. So with that, I'll just tell you the journey we've been on. We started in January. Um, our, cap, our capital team, the equity office, and a few other folks get into a, a virtual space and really talk about like, what does it mean from January to July to do the right work? Um, and so in uh, March and April, what we decided to do once again was go back and say, here's what we think is the best information. We allowed some folks to give us some real critical feedback. We tweet the presentation and now here we are in May sharing this information with you. In July, once we take all of your feedback uh, through the survey, um, after we explain also what the equity index is, we're gonna make some decisions about which capital projects are up first um, and how do we distribute that money in an equitable way. We come up with this long list of schools and prioritizing um, schools and communities. And then we take that to the board, they review it, and then we go back into public hearings um, before the board votes on the project. So we really added in this sort of May window to make sure that people have an opportunity to weigh in. That survey data is so critically important, so please complete it. Pass it on to your friends, pass it on to your neighbors. It takes about 10 minutes, but it's really helpful and insightful information. And so with that, I will now hand it over to our Executive Director of Capital Planning and Construction, um, Ivan, who will talk about, um, you know, what's up, and then we'll hand it over to Vinny and Ada. 
Thank you, Dr. Sweeney, and thank you all for taking the time to join us today. We are here in an effort for increased transparency in the capital planning process. And this is a work in progress, and we know it is not perfect, but CPS is committed to building on this process. Our primary goals today are to recap the FY21 capital plan, to provide information and build a deeper understanding of our capital planning process, seek input from you and the community on capital budget priorities and how CPS can continue to improve community engagement. Our topics for discussion today are the CPS building portfolio, understanding CPS budgets, capital planning approach, the equity index factors, and capital budget categories. There will also be a survey link provided at the end of the presentation, which we encourage you all to participate in. The CPS portfolio is large and our average facility age is 81 years old. Our oldest facility is 147. We maintain over 62 million square feet. And to put that in perspective, that'd be the equivalent of 14 Sears Towers. Many years of budgetary constraints has led to a large backlog of deferred needs. The total district need is over $3 billion. And that is just to bring all facilities to a state of good repair. The cost to repair CPS buildings has far exceeded what CPS has historically been able to afford. Because of this, prioritization of capital needs is critical and CPS needs and values your input in this process. CPS budgets are classified into three types, capital, operating, and debt. Operating is the day-to-day -day school operations. It's used to pay personnel costs such as salaries, benefits, non-personnel costs such as food, cleaning, utilities, instructional supplies, building supplies, and software. The debt is funds allocated to make annual payments on our bonds and other debt payments. Capital, what we'll be discussing today, represents the amount of funds allocated for long-term investments in our schools and our building construction and renovation, infrastructure-based technology like high-speed internet. Again, today we are focusing on the capital budget. The question continually has come up on the difference between capital and operating funds. Capital, managed by us, the planning and capital department, the projects typically include major renovations, such as roof replacements, or major interior renovations, MEP projects with long durations ranging from a few months to years. Operating and maintenance is managed by the CPS facilities department which is separate from the capital department. And the projects or services include custodial, landscaping, snow removal, basic facility, and basic facility upkeep. Those durations are only a few hours to a few days. Since CPS cannot afford to fund all deferred maintenance fees and repairs to the capital program, CPS buildings are still maintained through the facility team. There's a very close collaboration between CPS capital and facilities departments to address all the building needs, and we meet weekly. During this presentation, we are focusing on the capital portion of the CPS budget. We are talking about the difference between repairs that could cost thousands versus replacements that could cost millions of dollars. For example, air conditioning. The facilities department would be responsible for maintaining the existing window air conditioning units and making all necessary repairs and replacements. Whereas the capital department would be responsible for replacing or upgrading the entire air conditioning system. Another example is a roof. roof Repairs such as patching would be facilities versus a full roof replacement, which would be capital. Here's a look at the capital budget over the past six fiscal years. And you can see the ebbs and flows, which makes developing a long-term capital plan extremely difficult. While the need continues to be significant and consistent, the funding varies on an annual basis. Remember, our facility need is over $3 billion, which exceeds our annual funding level. This is why prioritization process is extremely critical and your input is not only welcome, but necessary. Over the next few slides, I will be recapping the FY21 capital budget categories. Many of these categories will remain the same for this capital year. However, two items to note. We heard from the community and continue to prioritize critical capital needs that focus on keeping buildings warm, safe, and dry including roof and envelope needs, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing needs. 
And based on what we, we heard from the community during last year's capital planning process and outreach, the bathrooms and parking lots were two new categories added to the FY21 capital plan. In addition, the CPS remains committed to investing in building accessibility. The programmatic upgrades, including modern, modernized classrooms to provide a 21st century learning environment, site improvements such as new playgrounds and turf fields, and infrastructure for IT safety and security. Vinny will be going into much more detail on these categories later in the presentation, including a few new priorities that CPS is considering for FY22. Also, similar to last year, CPS is requesting your input via the survey on the budget categories to help us prioritize capital needs across the portfolio. On the screen is a summary of the FY21 capital budget. Last year, the board approved a capital plan of $653 million. What's important to recognize is, is that although $653 million was approved, nearly $300 million was committed for priorities such as pre-K expansion and science lab upgrades. The remaining amount is prioritized for critical capital needs. I will now invite Ada back to speak on the equity index and how that informed the capital project selection and prioritization. Thank you, Ivan. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Your feedback is really essential to making progress on resource equity for and with our CPS students and families. Like Ivan shared, some of the slides I'll walk through today may look familiar if you joined our community engagement spaces last year. Um, the equity index is a tool that we are designing together to be used for resource equity through project prioritization. Um, so to give you a little bit of the framing, the index is composed of different indicators, different um, pieces of data um, to get us to uh, this a shared tool to get us to align on resource equity for project prioritization and resource allocation. So we have community factors, demographic factors, and a historical investment factors. So we're taking into account community factors because um, it's an acknowledgement that students interact with their school community. So when they go to school, um, but also the surrounding community around the school and the community where they live. We know that not every CPS student goes to the neighborhood school, right? So we wanna make sure that we're acknowledging all of these different systems. Um, the index also takes into account demographic factors. So we're taking into account our students' lived experiences, um, where they are in terms of uh, economic uh, disadvantage, learning English, whether or not they have an individualized education plan, um, and also looking at historical investment factors. So the factors highlighted here um, will remain in this version um, of our draft data for this current budget year in order to allow us to track progress on resource equity over time. We need to hear from you on whether these align with your priorities to help us determine the weighting of the data and whether new factors are needed. Um, and it's very important to provide your feedback through the survey that Ivan mentioned. So please, please complete that um, survey so um, we can continue to use your feedback. Um, just to highlight um, one change um, that came as a result of the feedback um, that the community provided last year, you'll see here on the bottom left in this dashed box, um, this indicator on students experiencing homelessness. So we added this indicator um, based on uh, community feedback to uh, make sure we prioritize the critical needs of students and school communities with the largest opportunity gaps. If we go to the next slide, I'll just briefly walk through the different indicators here, providing a little bit more detail. Um, so here are the community factors that are in um, the um, equity index draft. Um, so taking into account the hardship index, um, the hardship index represents, um, is rolled up at the Chicago community level. Um, so this takes into account um, the different communities that the students that come to a school live in um, to make sure that we are taking into account that context when resource allocations are made and to understand what opportunity gaps exist in, in those communities. We also um, have an indicator on um, whether uh, what, uh, what percent of students are residing in areas that are in best Southwest which are areas uh, that the city has identified as being priority for um, resource allocation given historical disinvestment. So making sure that we are aligning to have greater impact on equitable outcomes for our students. Um, you'll also see the community life expectancy data that we've included here. Um, so this is really taking into account um, that there are quality of life factors that we wanna make sure are rolled into this data. 
um, to make sure we are thinking about educational outcomes, but then also um, life outcomes as well. Um, and here also the students experiencing homelessness um, indicator that I mentioned before. If we go to the next slide, um, here are the demographic factors um, that are part of the equity index model um, as it is now. So looking at race, ethnicity, um, students who are eligible for free and reduced lunch as a proxy measure for um, whether students are, or what percent of students are um, experiencing economic disadvantage, uh, what percent of students are uh, English learners. So to make sure we're providing supports to our English learner students and percent of students who have uh, an individualized education plan or students who are currently in special education, um, as well as historical funding factors. And so here we just wanted to highlight um, for you how your feedback is leading to change and decisions based on inclusive partnerships and for equity. So here's a map of the fiscal year 21 capital projects overlaid against the UIC City of Chicago Hardship Index score. Um, so if you focus on the map on the right here, you'll see that the darker the blue or the higher the score, if you look at this, um, the legend, the higher the opportunity gaps or hardship. Um, so you see here um, then the different budget categories that highlight the, the projects or resource allocation investments for fiscal year 21 and where those were situated relative to our city of Chicago. Um, and you can see here that in fiscal year 21, um, CPS utilized the equity index to prioritize projects across the city. And you can see here that the projects that were prioritized are aligned with areas of hardship based on data and based on also the, the feedback that we heard from the community, the families that um, engaged in this space last year. I'll now turn it um, back over to our Executive Director of Capital Planning and Construction, Ivan. Thank you. Ivan, you're on mute. Thank you, Ada. Our capital planning approach is outlined here, but it's important to note that the annual capital plan is based on available funding. As you saw in an earlier slide, this can vary greatly from year to year, which makes planning difficult. Our building needs are based on the most recent facilities condition and index condition assessments, which was completed this year and will be available on CPS EDU later this month. CPS's portfolio is very large and the backlog of building needs is significant. This coupled with continued budget constraints necessitates a needs-based prioritization approach focusing on priority capital needs and keeping buildings warm, safe, and dry. We must maintain a data-driven approach that allows for an equitable allocation of capital funds while also aligning with the district's educational goals and initiatives. At FY21, we have made enhancements to this process and we will continue to do so in FY22. There is no one size fits all approach to capital planning. And we understand that the current process isn't perfect. However, CPS is committed to improving this process continuously and incorporating public feedback like these meetings today. Our approach this year follows the FY21 methodology for capital budget categories. We were also making several project process enhancements. Most notably, this year's process includes data from the updated facility assessments. We also remain committed to increasing transparency and public outreach, and we continue to work with Dr. Sweeney's group, who guides us to increase community engagement and the overall capital planning process. And today is a direct result of this partnership. We encourage everyone today to participate in the survey after the presentation to provide additional feedback and suggestions. We have recently completed a new round of facility condition assessments in all CPS owned and operated facilities. The previous facility condition assessment was completed in 2015. I would like to, to note a few highlights of the facility condition assessments. These are visual inspections only of the building systems. It is not the structure. The sample report you see here includes a rank and quantity for all assessed items at each CPS operated facility. A separate assessment landing page on cps.edu will come out later this month. A prioritization of capital planning needs, roof windows MEP, is in the process of systems that are dynamic and constantly changing. For example, systems can change significantly from one assessment to another, and this can be driven by a number of factors, including weather, accelerated de de deterioration, deferred maintenance, and recent investments. 
I will now turn it over to Betty to go into more detail on our budget categories for FY22. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. And also, uh, before I get started, I want to um, mention that if you have a question, please drop it in the chat um, so that we will be able to answer it um, quickly for you after the uh, presentation. Um, so again, thank you, Ivan, and thank you to all of those who have joined us here today. Shown here are the 10 proposed category budget categories that uh, we're reviewing for the FY22 capital plan. Uh, many of the budget categories uh, in FY21 will remain the same, but based on additional uh, public feedback we received um, and internal discussions, we are proposing to add two more categories shown here on the bottom uh, right. And those categories are student recreation and athletic resources, which cover existing auditoriums and stadiums, as well as modular refurbishment programs which will renovate, replace, or remove existing modular buildings across our current portfolio. Public feedback is critical to this process, and uh, we are requesting your input on informing the prioritization uh, of the capital budget categories via the survey. Um, and that survey is located <coughs> at cps.edu forward slash capital survey 2021. And this section, we'll spend a few few minutes uh, walking you through and explaining each of the categories. The first one you see on the screen right now, we'll provide some high level examples of the types of improvements and the scope and schedule of these projects, as well as highlight some of the impact to students um, and show that, uh, provide some pictures as we do believe pictures can speak a thousand words. So this cat first category, our ADA investment strategy. Before we, um, um, talk about the other ones, it's important to highlight that accessibility remains a critical capital priority to the C to CPS and continuing in FY22, CPS is going to support its long range in initiative to make all campuses more accessible. This includes working closely with the mayor's office for people with disabilities to develop a long term ADA capital investment strategy. This is an investment that will will spend $100 million over a five-year period. At a minimum, this investment would create an accessible route from the parking lot to the main floor of the main campus, and the improvements may include one or more of the following, an accessible parking lot, an accessible entrance, an accessible route from the uh, main entrance to the first floor, an accessible main office, and an accessible public restroom, which would include a male, and female student restroom and one uh, public or student unisex restroom. This next category, roof envelope needs. It includes our roofs, our windows and exterior masonry, all directly affecting our ability to provide warm, safe and dry facilities to our students, staff and community. Water infiltration leading to these types of needs can come from a roof or a window that passes useful life, damage to masonry, or as a result of the many freeze thaw cycles that we have here in the Chicago land area, as seen in the picture there on the top right. These are generally large complex projects that are phased over one to two years with the bulk of the exterior and interior work completed over summer break. Uh, due to budget constraints, we are not able to address every roof and envelope need in the district However, we work very closely with the facilities teams to repair and or stabilize these issues until they can be renovated or replaced, so as to minimize the impact on students and staff in the classroom. This next category, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing needs. These systems control the indoor environment in our building and focus on core mechanical systems, essentially heating and cooling the buildings and associated electrical and plumbing infrastructure. With an average building age of 80, a lot of this infrastructure is original to the building. If one or more of these systems or equipment is obsolete or not working, it can cause potential air quality issues for the building, which come at a risk of impacting the health and wellness of our students and staff. Each building system is different and presents its own set of challenges when planning an upgrade or replacement, with projects generally taking up to two years to complete. However, fixing these systems 
help us to provide learning environments that are safe, healthy, and comfortable to our students and staff. Before we go to the next category, though, I want to address something that I'm sure is on everyone's mind. What about the inside of my school, my classroom, my office? Why doesn't this have its own separate category? Well, interior finishes such as painting walls, repairing floors, is, it doesn't have its own dedicated category. However, it's often addressed as part of a larger capital project. For example, doing a roof or window replacement project, finishes that were damaged by water infiltration would be repaired and funded as, large, as part of the larger capital projects. On some of these projects, this could include addressing finishes for an entire classroom, the corridors. Um, it depends on the individual needs of each school. And we know that interior finishes are important and provide a sense of pride to us in our schools for our students, staff, and the community. This next category, restrooms. This was one of the uh, new categories in the FY21 budget, uh, and we plan to continue it in the FY22 budget. Currently, the day-to-day -day repairs for uh, use and functionality of bathrooms are performed by the facilities department on an ongoing basis. The capital department, um, as part of this restroom upgrade bucket, uh, will complete major bathroom renovations. CPS has over 5,000 student restrooms, and this is a subject that we heard a lot about from local school representation, principals, engineers, staff, as well as students. This category goes beyond those basic repairs to renovations that provide things like hands-free faucets, automatic soap dispensers, toilets with motion sensor, motion detectors to uh, improve sanitation, and hand in hand with uh, sanitation would be upgrades for student safety. So a renovation could feature items like enhanced hands-free lighting, open entryway, uh, tamper resistant fixtures and, and uh, graffiti resistant partitions and things like that. Another benefit of this bathroom renovation program is conservation. Uh, the use of low flow pressure assisted toilets can help us reduce our water usage and alleviate plumbing backups. Renovations provide these benefits, but they also include much needed infrastructure upgrades to, upgrades to our plumbing, piping, and lighting, as well as wall prep, painting, and floor replacement, as well as accessibility where needed. The restrooms in our schools uh, make a statement to our students and staff. Improving their appearance can have a positive impact on student behavior and faculty morale. Again, although we perform minor bathroom modifications and accommodations as part of many capital renovations, they are rarely ever at the, the scale of a gut rehab or full modernization, which is what this uh, bucket would do. So the goal here would be to continue this into the FY22 plan. Um, and uh, as an example, um, we would uh, be renovating a one girls and one boys toilet room in uh, each school. The next category is programmatic investments. Programmatic investments are made to modernize classrooms so that we can provide 21st learning uh, uh, environments for our students. Since 2011, the district has focused on strengthening neighborhood schools with high quality academic programs. And last year's academic program focus request for proposals or the RFP pro P process, as many of you know it, schools are able, were able to submit proposals requesting the addition of specific academic programs in their schools. The district seeks to continue this and maintain integrity in uh, decision making and provide even greater transparency and clarity uh, in how academic programs are added to schools. Uh, and improve the equity of access to high quality academic programming across the district as a result of this program. And this program is managed by the Office of Innovation and Incubation. Projects in this category include renovated classrooms to support, to support various district-led initiatives like the pre-K expansion, arts, STEM, STEAM, uh, dance, IB, and many others. The next category is overcrowding relief. The district's overall utilization, uh, building utilization is nearly 70%. Uh, 
So this category acknowledges that there are occasionally some buildings within the district that cannot efficiently serve their enrolled population due to space pressures. And they require relief by way of new capacity or capacity expansion. Depending on the need, this may include interior renovations, lease space build out, new addition, new modulars, or new school. The next category, IT. With regard to this category for today, we are focusing on the IT in our facilities, specifically to improve internet connectivity by building and repairing network infrastructure in our facilities across the district. Security category seeks to support students at every school, providing safety uh, is a, is a um, priority. Funds are allocated for new security equipment, including cameras, intercom phones, alarm systems, and modernized screening equipment. These next few categories um, focus on exterior site improvements. These usually take about six months to a year to complete, this one being playground renovations. The primary focus for playground upgrades includes ensuring that students and community users have a safe play area. These improvements can include new equipment for playgrounds for two to five year olds or five to 12 year olds, including new accessible surfaces. So we would no longer have the wood chips as you see there on the top right, left. And although facilities and capital team, we continue to repair and maintain our existing playgrounds, there are still many cases where playgrounds are outdated or have exceeded their useful life and require full replacement. On some of these projects, we partner with the Department of Water Management and the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. This has been a good partnership where CPS gets the benefit of supplemental funding, a new outdoor space, and the community benefits from the additional stormwater retention due to these types of projects. This next category is parking lot repairs or replacements. This was also added to the FY21 uh, budget as a direct result of the community engagement meetings that we held last year. So if you've driven or walked through some of the parking lots, no doubt you have seen the need for uh, repairs or replacements. Uh, this is now its own category. Previously, uh, parking lot repairs were primarily addressed by the facilities department for day-to-day -day maintenance or emergency issues uh, as part of the building accessibility or code-driven modifications that could be included in a, uh, larger capital projects. This category goes beyond just minor repairs. And again, you may ask, why did it need its own category? Well, this is because major parking lot renovations and or replacements are large improvements to the site that include code compliance with ordinances for landscaping and stormwater retention, to name a few. And these items often come at a very high price tag. Based on public feedback, we added this uh, into the FY21 program, and we plan to continue it in the FY22 program. This next category, student recreation and athletic resources, is one of two categories uh, that the district seeks to prioritize uh, as its own category for the first time in the FY22 uh, plan. When we talk about student recreation and, and athletic resources, we are alluding to stadiums, athletic fields, and natatoriums or swimming pools and the related facilities. For reference, CPS owns seven stadiums throughout the city. They are Eckersall, Gately, Hanson, Lane, Rockney, Stag, and Winnemag Stadiums. Fall sports at these stadiums include football and boys soccer. Spring sports include girls soccer, track, and field, and lacrosse. No doubt many of you, myself included, have fond memories of attending or participating in these types of events at the stadium. Our natatoriums or swimming pool facilities uh, range in size and are located at elementary and high schools throughout the district. Our current portfolio includes approximately 80 pools. Of these, there are several that are not operational or have been decommissioned. The non-operational pools um, could be in need of minor repairs, such as pool pumps or replacements, 
uh, or they could require a full gut rehab or a major renovation. These pools are used by CPS students and aquatic teams, Chicago Park District, and various other CPS partners for educational, competitive, and recreational events. CP op CPS operates various stadiums and athletic facilities throughout the district. And in a typical year, CPS stadiums may hold over 600 athletic events attended by 16,000 CPS students plus spectators. In addition, regular scheduled C in addition to regular scheduled CPS events, these stadiums also serve as site hosts for Chicago Public League competitions and also the Illinois High School Association events such as playoffs and tournaments. Fully functional athletic resources such as stadiums, athletic fields, and natatoriums provide CPS students with the resources that support physical health and wellness. And this can have a significant impact on students' abilities to achieve academic process. Upgrading these antiquated facilities is a priority for CPS uh, beyond just routine repair and maintenance. This category would provide renovations to student locker rooms and public restroom facilities, um, existing running tracks, athletic fields, um, creating them with more sustainable material. Uh, pools and auditoriums, uh, renovating or repairing them, uh, the spectator seating there and concession stands. These renovations would also include much needed infrastructure upgrades, mechanical systems, plumbing, as you see there on the top uh, left, uh, piping, interior and exterior lighting, structural repairs and finishes, as well as ADA accessibility uh, repairs. One example of how CPS is uh, prioritizing investments in student recreation facilities is the anticipated Eckersall Stadium renovation project. This project is scheduled to be bid out this fall with construction beginning in 2022. With your input, we seek to do much more. We seek to make this its own category and um, renovate these uh, resources. The next category, or the second new potential category for FY22, is modu our modular refurbishment program. You may ask, what do we mean when we say modular? Well, modular buildings are commonly built on a fixed foundation with walls, roof, and floors typically constructed off-site and assembled on delivery. Because of this, modular buildings can sometimes be moved or transported either as a unit or in sections. Modular buildings are seen in various uh, sizes. Uh, most common uh, sizes are two, four, six, or eight classroom modular buildings. In recent years, CPS has been working with various vendors to identify more sustainable and more permanent material solutions uh, for the construction of these types of uh, facilities. Currently, CPS has nearly 60 campuses with uh, modular buildings for approximately 350 classrooms. Over the years, modular buildings have been added across CPS to address various needs, including uh, relieving overcrowding by providing additional classroom space. They've been used as dedicated driver's ed facilities, and more recently to support CPS's initiative to expand uh, pre-K. In coordination with schools, the chief of schools, and the office of portfolio, the proposed strategy would include a campus by campus analysis to review how schools are utilizing modular buildings. CPS would review each campus for the following potential actions. Assess the age and conditions of all existing systems, the roof, the wall, the finishes we talked about for each modular, and then develop a list of uh, repairs requirements if they are needed. Uh, to bring the existing modules up to a state of good condition, or alternatively, uh, based on age and condition and need, evaluate if the module should be replaced or potentially removed. Now, I know that was a lot of information, and I definitely appreciate your attention. Uh, these are the 10 categories that we are seeking to uh, your feedback on via the survey uh, that, again, is located at CPS dot edu forward slash capital survey 2021. The survey you take will help to inform these categories, 
the final categories for the FY22 plan. Again, thank you so much for your participation and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Sweeney or Adrian, I think for question and answer. Thanks, Vinny. Yeah, we're going into Q&A. Um, a quick reminder to folks uh, to please use the Q&A function to drop your questions in. Um, as part of the registration process, we did uh, ha have a space for individuals to submit questions in advance. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the pre-submitted questions um, and then move over to the ones that we find in the Q&A. Um, so to kick us off, uh, this question is for Ivan um, Hansen. How much money is CPS expecting for the FY22 capital budget? Uh, thank you, Adrian. So for the uh, FY22 capital plan, uh, we intend to continue to, to build on a multi-year $758 million investment, including outside funding made in FY21. Uh, so CPS intends to target and invest about $550 million for the FY22 capital plan. Thank you for that overview. Um, this next question is for Vinny. Can, can you describe how the district prioritizes uh, the projects for capital? Sure. So CPS uh, has historically prioritized projects based on building needs. Uh, these needs are based on the facility assessments. Uh, the facility needs priorities are defined at, uh, in the um, district's uh, educational facilities master plan and listed in the presentation today. Um, when the categories, I should say, CPS is uh, seeking the input, public input on the prioritization of the facility needs categories to incorporate into this year's project prioritization process. Uh, Chicago Public Schools, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Chicago Public Schools, um, Facilities and Capital Planning Department has recently completed the 2019-2020 uh, facilities assessment as Ivan uh, mentioned. And as a result, uh, we have a new uh, facility condition index that we are using in this year's uh, prioritization. Um, a few points to highlight he mentioned was that the condition, the assessment is a visual inspection only of the building systems, not a destructive um, um, assessment. And that the sample reports include, the, include a rank and quantity for all assessed items at each facility uh, that CPS owns and operates or leases. Um, a separate, again, a separate uh, landing page will be included uh, on the cps.edu later this month, but the uh, prioritization, um, Again, it's a process and some systems are dynamic. We talk about the many freestyle cycles. Um, it could be dependent on maintenance, but um, we use the facility condition index along with the equity index to, to come up with uh, um, our, our project list. And then we also reach out to the uh, facilities department and we work with them and, and they are our boots on the ground and we have other technical reports that we receive and that is how we come up with the uh, prioritized list of projects. Thanks for that. And um, I, I know that you all mentioned um, at the top of this that there would be a survey for folks and, and you talked about the survey that we administered last year uh, as well. Um, do, do you plan to share the results of the feedbacks that survey uh, publicly? Yes, yes, we, we, we do. We'll, we'll compile all the results um, like we did last year and we'll put those back on the on the uh, web page. Thanks. Um, this next question is for Ivan. It's from the Illinois Network of Charter Schools. Um, they're asking, will charter schools be a part of the FY22 capital plan? Uh, yes, no matter if it's a charter, uh, a contractor, a CPS district operated school, um, all, all the critical needs that CPS own um, and lease facilities are considered uh, part of the overall capital uh, plan prioritization process. Thanks. And this section for our equity team. Um, are charter schools in CPS owned buildings awarded an equity index score? Yes. Um, a part of similar to the last question, um, any school that's owned 
operated um, and CPS has an equity index score. Thank you. Uh, quick plug, a reminder to please be sure to take the survey. Uh, if you have any specific feedback on things, um, is there, uh, this next question here should Benny, um, is there a public facing document or database that individuals can access to see the accessibility status of each school? Um, yes. Okay. yes, the accessibility status for all schools is posted on the cps.edu website. Uh, CPS works closely with the Mayor's Office for People with Disability to, to develop their long range strategy. And again, we have that five year commitment to uh, make all schools uh, uh, first school accessible. And um, if you want to know your school's accessible um, accessibility level, then it is definitely on the uh, individual school's website. Thanks, Vinny. And can you talk a little bit more about building finishes? Sure. Um, so interior finishes such as uh, would include uh, painting, uh, what the walls, the, the in the classroom, the corridors, it could be repairing the floors, uh, the ceilings, uh, interior finishes could include lighting upgrades. Um, um, again, it's not its own separate category, but when we have a capital project there, uh, we, again, if we're replacing the roof, we would, we would repair any finishes that were damaged from the roof. If we were doing an MEP project, anything that was damaged as a result of, um, you know, possibly steam leaks or something like that, we would repair that as part of the larger capital project. Thank you. And, and Ivan, you talked about the, the $3 billion need. Um, can, what's the minimum adequate funding level that CPS requires annually for capital? Um, great question. Um, 400 million annually, uh, just for the facility needs category alone would be the minimum uh, ideal funding. Um, that includes the, the needs of, of the existing spaces only. Um, and just note, it does not include any new programming uh, or ADA upgrades or capacity uh, expansions. Thanks. This next question is um, also for Ivan. Can you talk about the CPS five-year capital plan? Uh, sure. So CPS's five-year capital plan strategy is, is outlined in the, uh, the EFMP. Uh, the Educational Facilities Master Plan. Uh, while the focus is, is expected to continue to be to address the warm, safe, and, and, and dry, uh, the priorities, the long-term strategy also focuses on the capital needs uh, informed based on the current public feedback. Um, a capital you know, funding is, is always a key driver in the strategy. Um, and, and you can find the latest uh, uh, Educational Facilities Master Plan is also on cps.edu. Thanks for that. Um, this next question is from uh, Mr. Davis uh, from, I think that's George Washington High School. Um, states, my Alderman says that, the, that a new school building cannot be constructed in our neighborhood without TIF funds. Is that the case? I think this is one for Ivan. Uh, sure. Um, so as you see in the presentation, we have a significant backlog of critical needs and, and funding is, is always a key driver. Um, to the annual budgets and in our plans. Um, we're always looking for alternate funding sources. Um, you know, for example, some of the other sources we've pursued include state, federal, local TIF funding. Uh, we've partnered with other city agencies such as Water Rec and the Department of Water. Um, so alternate funding is, is not only welcome, it's needed. Uh, thanks for that. Um, we also received the call or a question here. How soon are how soon will renovations begin? Will it only be certain schools uh, or all CPS buildings that get an investment? Um, well, the goal would be eventually for you know uh, I'd imagine those schools that have a need uh, would definitely get the investment. But generally, once the capital project is approved, you would go through a design process. For those approved projects and those which starts in the fall, 
And then projects are bid out in the spring for construction to start in the spring and or summer uh, for the those approved on the capital budget. Thanks. And uh, there's a question in the chat. Um, I'll, I'll try to rephrase. Um, so question from Kennedy, how, how can a school get in the queue for capital re renovations? Um, so I, I'll take that, uh, unless you want it, Denny. <laughs> no, I'll take that one. Um, so it, you know, we have, uh, as we talked about, we have the most recent facility assessments. Uh, first time they've been done since 2015. Um, so as we go through that and we have the assessments, we, we, we are help, that is helping us inform what the facility needs are um, and start on, on that side of the, uh, the room. We also have the equity piece that we work with Dr. Sweeney's group on um, to come up with the overall uh, equity index number. Um, so, so that's really how the, the capital plan that we're putting together now um, comes to, comes to, uh, to happen. Um, but there's also other ways that the, the capital work can happen. Um, it, you know, it starts from the facility side and their facility manager, their quality managers. Um, when they, they start the, the process of repairs, if it, you know, if it becomes, as we, as we talked in the, in the presentation, if it becomes this larger project, um, it, get, it does get kicked to the capital side. Um, when we meet with them weekly, um, we have staff that's assigned to them to, to go through these, these requests. Um, and we go through them. Um, unfortunately, we do have a huge backlog of, of work and, and, a, and a deferred need. Um, but that, that is the, the, the process. And I, and I do see in the chat. So um, principal, you are, you are working on the, on the correct path um, to get some of these things um, um, worked out. Thanks for that. And, and uh, I, I've been, uh, this might be one for you as well. So you all reference different reports that people can access. Um, th this one's from Roberto saying, hey, good folks at CPS, I'd like to know if there's a user-friendly data tool and visual visualization to show the capital investments school by school based on the equity index. Um, and then he went on to share a few helpful, useful tools. Uh, is there a tool that you all have I, um, that's public facing that visualizes the investments? Um, well, we, we do have the, the uh, School websites where where those those reports do land, um, and we do publicize the capital plans every year. Um, I'm not sure if, if that's what he's referencing, or if there's if there's other documents on, on that side of it. That's helpful. I, um, let's see. Um, I, I, yeah, I think that's helpful. One one thing um, I, I do know that every time you put last year, at least when we released the report, there was a heat map that showed you know different types of investments. I think that from there it also rolls into like the actual investments that are made. Um, and so yeah, I, I think and we, yeah. we showed that map earlier, um, Adrian. But but that is that will also be posted um, as we do with the results of the survey. And also, um, um, it will be posted with the uh, when we do the capital hearings. We usually have, have that information available um, because that at that point, you know, we are have a budget that we're presenting to the board to be approved, and so you would be able to see uh, what the project lists are there. Thanks for that. Um, so we'll give folks another few minutes here to, to add any final questions um, that they have. Otherwise, I'm not going to keep people for, for an additional 30 minutes um, uh, for the sake of keep, keeping folks. Um, so we'll, we'll give it a, a, another minute. And if uh, nothing else, I can um, turn it over to Doc Sweeney. Thank you. Um... I'm sorry, Roberta, as soon as you dropped the link, I started looking at the tool. So let me close out um, what you were sending me. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the link to the survey is in the chat. For those of you who are with us online, you can complete the survey. Uh, next slide, please, at cps.edu slash capital survey 2021. 
we could change over to the next slide. Um, and it's also good too, I always um, really, really just appreciate the questions that people ask because they keep me thinking about other ways that we could show um, the data and, and make the process more clear. So thank you to all of you who've asked questions so far. Um, if you hear the beeping, that's because uh, CPS Google Chat had an update. And so now we are working behind the scenes to communicate with questions. So that's what all the beeps and the bells and the whistles are about. So if you hear that, um, our apologies. Um, just to bring back up the slide that lets you know the process. So uh, that survey data to Ivan's point will be, um, we will take that information, we'll organize it, we will publish that information. Know that we're excited because this gives us two years worth of data to, to hear from people in their communities by their zip codes or by the schools that they select so we know what people uh, see as most important for them in improving their schools. So please share that link with folks you know. Um, for school leaders, you can put it in your newsletter, send it to your friends. Um, the more information we collect, the better we can understand uh, what are the, some of the current needs and values that people are prioritizing for their schools. We will at some point take the equity index, um, also the facilities index to figure out like where do we fare and how do we take the money that we have to produce the list of projects. We bring that to the board for review. They give us feedback um, and then we come back to public hearing. So I also just wanna make sure that everyone understands this is not the public hearing. This is really about engagement and we put this in place to live up to our CPS five-year vision commitment and to really continually get uh, community feedback. So thank you for what you said. Thank you for the questions you asked. Uh, please complete the survey. Um, it's at cps.edu capital, I'm sorry, slash capital survey 2021. It's gonna be open until the 21st of May. We really appreciate you. Um, have a good night. Thanks. <laughs>